So, I have some news. I've just been out on the bike. It works. It's amazing. To bring you up to speed, first of all, I finally managed to get the wire that I needed uh, to make the main power cable and I've soldered it in place there um, and I've chosen to put it uh, on the main positive terminal of the battery and the negative terminal of the battery, i.e. I'm not running it through the BMS. This is a small BMS and a cheap BMS. Uh, it does have sort of vol uh, low voltage protection on it. Uh, long term though I think I'll try and get a voltage alarm and mount it as a separate item on the battery. I'd rather do that than run it through this. Um, this will end up stressing it more long term I'm sure by running um, running the battery power through it. Uh, I'd rather not. So this will now only be used for charging which is fine. That's really what I want the BMS for in the first place. So that one there has been soldered on. Uh, this for reference by the way is 12 AWG and it's uh, the, the red one actually is from the Turnigy, Turnigy uh, and the black one is just another seller but they're both um, sort of pure copper very thin multi-stranded copper so very flexible which is nice um, um, and hopefully capable of taking the current I mean it's the thickest wiring I've got on the bike and it's much thicker than well, a fair bit thicker than the uh, wiring on the hub motor uh, control box so in theory it should take it so it's been fine so far so also to bring you up to speed, I have been charging this pack and the other pack, which is over there. Now, when I charged this one, it was slow to charge, which I knew, and it got up to about, what would it be now, about 53.8, so it's getting very close. It probably started to uh, move away from its constant, constant current charge cycle and on towards the constant voltage charge cycle and I happened to notice, this was after about 12 hours by the way, um, again it's a slow charger, it's 2 amp charger for an 11 amp hour pack. Um, one of the cells in this one here, in fact, I, wonder if it, I did mark it, I wonder if it's on this side, no it might be on the other side, one of them got quite warm, uh, not catastrophically warm but warmer than the rest so uh, I may have a bad single cell in all of this. Now this was always a risk, I've used old uh, used cells from laptop batteries, this is always a risk. Um, so I stopped it there, took it off charge, and I've kept monitoring it after that, and it dropped uh, only very little, to be honest, and it settled out at around, what was it now, 53.2, uh, something like that. So it settled out, okay, and that was about, well, that was more than a day ago, it's been about uh, a day and a half just sat, and it settled out perfectly well. So this is the first one I ended up building with this, so I didn't really want to use it with a potentially dodgy cell in it, but I have, uh, just because I really wanted to try the bike. Um, and it seems to be generally working all right. But the other pack, I then went and charged that one. Of course, I always had the charge wire on it. I've yet to put the main power wire on it. I've charged this one up. And this one took charge much better, even at about 53.8, I think it was, volts, when there was a LED that came on inside this. And I think it started to try and balance the packs. And I'll talk about the balancing in a moment. Um, even when that happened, this was all stone cold, completely cold, which is great. Um, I stopped charging it around about the, the 53 point, I think, um, yeah, around about 53.8 on the charger, take it off and it sags a little bit and it ended up around 53.3 or 4, um, which is fine. That's essentially every single bank to 4.1 if you divide it evenly. But of course, they're not quite like that. I did run my multimeter up every single one of the 13 cells and obviously some of them are there's varying balancing some are higher than others which is what i'd expect i've built them out of used cells so on this one they're generally mostly even there's only two they're about there and there roughly which are a bit higher ones at like uh 4.14 ones at 4.18 rest of them are very even at 4.1 so i think the bms was starting to peel off the charge from one of these and one of these certainly i think it's that row there uh it was peeling them off so this pack here overall is the most balanced generally it'll take a few charge cycles i'm sure for me to run it down charge it run it down for the bms to start really bringing them all up to the same so this one's got the most potential this one's looking pretty good this one was more out of balance in general some of them were more varied than others and one pack has got a potentially dodgy cell in it and that one there has is the lowest bank as well whichever one it is it might be one of these here uh, it's the lowest one so this one might need some attention worst case i will be able to gently unsolder uh the end of it let's whatever one it is and then i think i should be able to push through the battery the cell and push in another one i've got some spares or i can just get hold of a spare on its own um the, the whole pack is certainly not scrap and i was prepared for this kind of situation and it certainly still works fine so that's it. That's me charging them, and they now work. And I really couldn't wait to get them in the bike. And I finished off some of the last bike stuff 
uh, the other a few days ago as well. So I've mounted this bag on it, which works quite well. I mounted the motor controller inside of here. Let me show you that side there. So it's in there. It's quite tightly packed in there. And the wiring, you can see it there. That goes to the front of the bike, down the other side of the top tube. It's yeah, it's just under there. And everything else is all mounted up, ready to go. There's still some fine tuning I've got to do. I'm basically I'm beginning chapter two now. This is shakedown chapter, uh, finding all the faults, making sure it can last, all that kind of thing. So amongst the many things I need to do is put some sort of uh, bathroom silicon sealant style stuff under this little protective cap and really try to seal this area from water ingress. I don't want it getting wet in there too much. Any water that obviously catches this wire will simply run down it due to gravity and straight in there. So I want to try and put some silicon in there if I can. Um, I need to protect the battery inside of this space a lot better. I put it in naked earlier on. I've been doing some riding. Um, I put it in naked, which I put some padding down there in the form of an old rag, um, but it shifted around. It didn't move much. Uh, it didn't do that much in the end, and the battery kept sort of hitting, banging the back of this tube on the bike as I was riding around it. That's not good. I don't want it to batter the battery pack. I need to protect it and uh, make it a lot softer for for the battery. And the other thing is how sort of how much it drained. Of course, when you use this. Uh, and you put a load through it, which if you want to floor it and go like that with it, of course the range will potentially drop, or the, the gauge will drop, um, just because at that moment you're putting a high load through it. Once you ease off again, up to cruising speed like this, then it, it goes back up. Um, and of course I started this evening with it saying full, and for the most part it stayed full, and then as I kept doing more sort of local journeys, I've done a few, I've done about three laps, a few journeys recently, um, it's maintaining more about half now, and as I, I floor it, sometimes it goes down, of course it goes down to like low for the moment that I floor it, come back off again, and it hovers between half and full for the most part. The battery voltage I've been measuring as I've been doing my laps, it has gone down to this pack here. So it started at 53.4, so that's 4.1 per cell averaged, although some of them aren't quite like that because it's a little bit unbalanced. And it ended up at, what was it? Yeah, 50.5, and uh, that there is pack two over there. That's just some other sort of data I've been collecting for this one. But it started off about 53.2 uh, earlier on today, and some other numbers I got there after various laps, 51.8, 50.6, 50.5. So it is going down, but hopefully not too much, and I've done about three laps of the local area. Um, I've yet to find out how many miles it is. I suppose it could be up to five or six miles. So... Other other things I'm thinking are maybe I still need to get a rear pannier rack style bag, which is what a lot of people have with e-bikes, put a bag on top of that and run it into the motor controller. And I probably will live with both. I, because of the size of my batteries, I'll probably keep one in there, keep one on there, run them both. And of course, this was always my plan to use all of my batteries, which means I'll be using the bike with a 22 amp hour pack, which is what I want. So that's where I'm at with it. It does work. Um, further videos to come. Uh, I want to try and get a video of me riding it and showing that it works. And there's a lot more sort of uh, ironing out the creases, so to speak, uh, of all the uh, all the foibles with the bike at the moment, uh, of which there are a few. But at least it works. I'm very happy.